All right. This is an ad for a party. <laughs> <laughs> because we're turning a whole year old. Woohoo! One year, baby. We've been making a podcast for a whole year. Jonathan Van Ness, can you believe? <laughs> <laughs> so to celebrate a year of getting to know you guys and uh, a year of um, embarrassing our husbands, potentially embarrassing our parents. I mean, mine listen to it here and there. Melissa, if yours ever find it, God rest your soul. Oh, no, no, no. Shorty Mercy and Jeff and Burnett. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So to celebrate, we are having a Zoom party and um, we want you to come be with us. And so I was thinking today, you know, maybe we should let people know if you've never been to one of our Zoom parties before, and there have only been a couple, uh, maybe we should let them know what there is to expect. Oh, wow. Well, first of all, we wear real clothes, Uh real makeup. There's lighting. There's set decoration. I swear to God, it's a real party. (laughs) (laughs) There is um, drinking. There is, there's always someone who just really steals the show. Um, It's just... It's a good time with your stranger friends. It is. It's a really nice time to put a face with the handle in the chat right because you know we have our chat regulars chat regulars be up in there so it's a really nice way for if you haven't you know interacted with your stranger friends outside of the monday night live this is the time to get to know them there are games there are trivia i'm not gonna lie and say that there are never technical issues but (laughs) there are so few now that i'm not ever in charge of that it is a really smooth little show, I promise you. <laughs> so it's a fun time. And if you're like, what the hell does a Zoom party look like? Guys, it is a free for all. Um, it is so much fun. Um, really, I mean, the first time we did it, I was like, how is this even going to go? But it is really, truly something that I've started looking forward to. Um, and just getting to see everybody's faces in real time has been really nice uh, because this has become such a tight knit group of people it's strangers it's crazy and then remember we thought an hour would be like how are we going to fill this hour oh my god an hour flies and then (laughs) next thing you know we look up it's been two hours and we're still hanging out right right um there's also a lot of weed there (laughs) that's what we do in there drinks are flowing (laughs) and we um we have prizes so Melissa has a game planned, and so we are giving away another Cousins in this motherfucker recording session, which is one of our Patreon tiers, but you could win a chance to record your very own episode with us. And um, we are also giving away $25 to our friend Trizzy Her new sticker shop you guys may have seen. It's so cute. You can find her on Instagram. At, she has all kinds of cute stuff. She's got Imperfect Strangers stickers in there as well. You could get a chance to win one of those fabulous prizes. So come, you know, what else are you doing on a Saturday night in a pandemic? Okay, but you know what you've forgotten? You've forgotten the other really super important part of the Zoom party. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Amanda's trying to pretend like it's also not going to be her 39th birthday. <laughs> yeah. So the Zoom party will be also to celebrate Amanda's birthday, um, both the podcast and the um, uh, uh, other co-host, Amanda. Uh, we're to- it's Taurus season, bitch. So um, be sure you come and celebrate if I were you. If I wanted to win the prizes, I would brush up on the first 40 episodes <laughs> because there will be trivia and, you know, you're going to want to win. So um, please come to this party. It's Saturday, May 22nd, 7 p.m. You will get your Zoom link after, when will you get the Zoom link? I'm up here trying to act like I know what's going to happen. Anyway. <laughs> I don't be in charge of this part. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You can send us, tickets are $20, so you can send us your money through Venmo at Imperfect Strangers Podcast or on PayPal, bs.strangers at gmail.com. You can find both of those addresses in the post on our Instagram or at our website, www.imperfectstrangerspodcast.com. gets you a ticket into the show 
And then on the morning of, so the morning of Saturday, May 22nd, I will send out an email with the link to the Zoom show. And then that way, because last time we, I had people sending me money at midnight the night before and I was sending a whole gang of emails. So to make this easier on myself, Saturday morning, you'll get your shit. You'll be all ready to go. 7 p.m. Eastern, May 22nd. We hope to see you there. Yep. All right. <laughs> we really are one year old. That's crazy. We made it here in this podcast. Woo! I know. Congrats. To you, too. Thank you. Okay. Let's get it started. I'm afraid I've reached a crossroads. Meet me at the crossroads. Crossroads, you won't be lonely. Meet me at the crossroads. So you won't be lonely. lonely. Crossroads. And I'm gonna miss everybody. And I'm gonna miss everybody. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help it. <laughs> I mean, really, why they had to kill his dog, though? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you were at a crossroads before I rudely interrupted into song. <laughs> I'm at a crossroads where I have to accept that outside is open. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck? Yeah. And um, my kids need to be, you know, slowly but surely re-socialized, albeit outdoors because our children aren't vaccinated. So I told you this. Maja joined a softball team last Mm -hmm. week. Yep. Very cute. Maja also plays a soccer class. She jo- has a soccer class in the backyard up the street with um, my friend Jamie. Uh, it's cute. Four to six little girls show up, everybody masked. And, you know, they're just learning, you know, the um, basics of soccer. Yeah. That's very cute. And it's a nice little hour for Maja to get some sun with a little, you know, a little vitamin D because her little ass do look like she live under the stairs. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, you know... The soccer class is not hard. Like, I drop her off in the backyard. My friend Jamie knows me. Uh, Jen's there. And, like, Jamie and Jen sometimes hang out in mm-hmm. the backyard. But, like, it's not, like, a pressure for me to have to do it. Because they know once I drop Maja off, I got to run. I got to pick Shalom up from whatever backyard she's sitting in that she walked to after school. And then I got to come back here mm-hmm. and, you know, scoop up Maja. So I'm always on the run with one of my many children. So there's never been a pressure for me to like hang out and especially now that's really good for me because I haven't left the house in however long and I've only recently, you know, rejoined society by, you know, I had, I had my one outdoor restaurant dinner, wild, crazy bananas. And, you know, I've resumed my beauty, which is all I care about. So I haven't (laughs) hung out with people. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) You know, I've resumed the important shit. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't hung out with people. So um, last week when Maja started softball, my friend Jen was like, oh, you'll love it. Super laid back. We have a cute kind of little underdog team. Everybody's going to be in mass, so that's not going to be weird. Because some of the other baseball teams, softball teams around here, I looked at the pictures when I was looking to see. And the reason why Maja didn't sign up on time is because I saw that some teams don't be wearing a mask. And I don't want Maja who very much needs her mask Mm -hmm. um to feel like an outsider so it was a nice cute team that i joined i love the um coach's wife everybody's cool regular normal so because i haven't been outside i showed up to the uh practice you know in the clothes that i wear to unload the dishwasher and you know fold laundry and you know maybe not make a bed and you know spot clean a a floor i i i'm not where am i going Mm -hmm. so i didn't go house dress crazy but you know black leggings black t-shirt you know fuzzy socks crocs i didn't look dressed so the moms start showing up to the softball game girl with the equipment in a in a 
softball bag, so like a mm-hmm. bag designed for this. I had all my shit in a Whole Foods paper bag. Girl, it was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bat that I just found somewhere. I had a glove that was too small because it was all they had left at the at the at the Dick Sporting Goods. Aww. I had uh, no uniform yet because I just got here. Yeah. I had um, oh, okay. Maja looked crazy and mommy looked crazy. Wait, and... do they have to practice in a uniform? No, but some kids show up in their little shirt, you know. Okay. So Maja didn't have any of that. And I also was looking like me, a person who hasn't left the house. So the mom starts showing up and they're in regalia, honey. Like, like, like maybe they got the memo many, many weeks ago that they had to socialize. So I'm talking about, you know, the tie dye mask with the matching chain and the, 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 the sweatshirt, the jeans, the, you know, the sneaker you would wear to a doctor's appointment. Yeah. Look cute. The handbag. I mean, the hair done. Jen's always cute. She had on a fucking house dress. I mean, not a house dress, a summer dress. You know, something that had pockets. Mm-hmm. Girl. So, you know my anxiety. I'm now having a conversation in my head. <laughs> about what you look oh like God. and what they're saying about you. Oh, 100%. Melissa definitely don't leave the house. Look at Melissa. Look at this girl. Oh, my God. Does she know that we are judging her child based on what she looks like? Wowzers. Let her get it together. So out loud, I said, because you know me, I'm just going to say some shit and then hope I can backpedal out of it. (laughs) I was like, oh, okay. So this is like a place where y'all wear clothes. (laughs) I'll keep that. I'll keep that in mind for next time. So... (laughs) I just wanted to, like, have a safe space or we could talk about this because I know there are people out there now that have been in the house this whole year that are having to navigate putting real clothes on and being a human in the world again. And yeah. I know it's not easy. It's it's it, There's a specific mom world to it, but I know it's a general thing for everybody. People haven't been in the office for a year. People haven't been commuting for a year. There's a lot that happens in the outside world that, you have to reteach yourself how to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It's, um, it's, it's wild. I have, um, you know, I'm, I'm home more than I was, you know, over a year ago when life was, you know, normal and I had like a schedule and places to be. And, um, it's just been, it's just been, Holy shit, there's like six fucking cardinals, red cardinals flying around in my backyard. You know who that is. I have never seen that many in one place at one time. Sorry, that just like, there were like two on the roof, one in the tree and one in the feeder. You know what that is. Those are all my friends. Coming to say hi. There he is. Okay, wow, that was crazy. Um, but, um, but you know, as as far as kid activities, like... Quinn just gets she just gets out of the car and goes into the gym so I don't ever have to go in and see anybody there um and Bennett the way that his karate place is set up it's like in um like a two-story building and so he's got to go upstairs and so when I drop him off I just pull the car out the front and then I make him walk by the window upstairs so I can see that he got upstairs and then the door is just right there into the dojo um but he wants me to come inside to pick him up when he's done And, you know, normally by that time of day in, you know, pre-COVID life, I had on like an outfit and my hair was probably clean. And if it wasn't clean, it was pulled back. Lately, I'm just walking in there with like my old, you know, comfort sweatpants that are like giant and also tie-dyed, braless with a podcast t-shirt on, hair, crazy I really like changed my washing routine, trying to like not shampoo it as much. So it might be greasy. It might have hair oil in it. I don't know. Um, Quinn's Crocs. Maybe there's a pair of socks on with it. A mask. I really feel like the mask is my only saving grace and that hopefully people don't recognize me. But like the other day, his little instructor had to come out and give me some information on some stuff. And I was just like, oh, my God, I'm sure she's judging me so hard right now because... I I look like I'm depressed and like coming out of a an episode. 
Yeah, but the thing is, that depressed look is my my look. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's how I I feel like I look, and I'm not I'm not getting back involved in makeup. Come on. Well, I mean, as long as we're still wearing masks as much as we are, what's the point? Right. And I don't, like, I was thinking maybe I'll, you know, zhuzh up my, I'll wear eyeliner Mm -hmm. and, you know, do my eyelashes and fill in my brows. But then, like, why? You don't even get the whole face. And and my lips are my face, so what do we need to get that part? So what do you need to look at my eyes? Also, don't look me in my eyes. Don't look me in my eyes. You are you know, stressing just, me the fuck out. <laughs> don't don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. It makes me. And th- and then I wonder, like, why am I like this? Then you know, I get into my head, like, you know, first you get into your head about what you're wearing or what you look like, and then and then I'm in my head about, are they are they thinking that I'm weird because I'm not engaging and I'm not talking? Because for so long I could get out of it because Lennox was little enough. That, you know, if we were at a sports practice, he he wanted to go to the playground and play. So I could, like, hang out at the playground and not have to engage with the parents that were, you know, waiting at the activities. Um, But now I just – I'm in my head the whole time thinking, like, do they think that I'm weird? Do they – people automatically often assume that I'm, like, very mean or kind of bitchy. Then they've told me. After they've gotten to know me, they're like, wow, I thought you were a real bitch. And I was like, no, I just have really bad social anxiety. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've been told before after someone's gotten to know me that they thought I was a bitch. But I also like, I'm like, that's cool. I mean, I- <laughs> <laughs> Good. Tell everyone. No, um, <laughs> it's it's weird. And, no, I um, know. What's it from, do you think? I I don't know. I've always I've always been like this. I really, I hate, just today, I was asking a friend of mine, she is branching out, she's a chef, and she's branching out and starting to do her own thing, and like pop-ups, and like catering, and personal chef kind of stuff, and I was asking her if if I could like place orders with her, and like what her process was for getting meals, because I also wanted to have some, you know, prepared weekly for my dad, and she does this pop-up at, I think it's a club, on Sundays, and she was like, I know people, like, aren't your thing. She's like, it's not your scene, but I could, you know, people can come and just, like, pick up food if they don't want to stay and hang around. And I was like, wow, you just really looked at me, and you were like, I know that people aren't. <laughs> I like- love that, though. I Don't you, I, you've arrived, motherfucker. Like, when people know the vibe, like, I... Girl, I miss my friend Maria so much. I have not seen her in like 15 months in the flesh, you know, Aww. except for like when she's dropped off a, a Greek dessert or like she has turkey bacon on her side of town and she'll bring it by. Like mm-hmm. I haven't like physically touched her or seen her, but like, and we don't really text that often, but when we do it, it matters. Yeah. Um. But she's one of my friends that also knows. Like she's like, uh, and every now and again, like every, like once a year, it'll be like, you know, I didn't say happy birthday. It's not a big deal, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I forgot happy birthday, too. It's fine. Love you. Talk to you later. Um, so she's that's that's one of your ride or dies right there. Yeah. If they can say, I know you don't fuck with people, come do this your way, that means they accept you fully for who you are. Yeah, but then, great. I mean, sometimes I just feel like, why why can other people do this so effortlessly and engage so easily in social situations and I just I mean so this weekend um you know because things have been you know the kids were remote learning for the first quarter and then you know obviously parents aren't allowed in our school buildings I don't know how it is at other schools but like you you're not even allowed to drop something off if your child forgot it so there's no there's no chit-chatting after activities there's no you know meeting parents at the drop off and pick up there's none of that and so Quinn has made some new friends this year um and she wanted to go to the mall by herself and I was like you're not old enough to go to the mall by yourself but if you want to invite you know a friend or two I'll take you and I'll walk six feet behind you pretend like I don't know you and just make sure that you're safe um so we did that and then I had to take the girls home. And the one that we were dropping off first, 
the girls wanted to go inside because she has guinea pigs that she just got she has a gecko and so they wanted to go see the animals in person so I was like yeah go ahead but just don't be long because I had to take the other girl home so anyways I'm just sitting in the car waiting because I don't know the parents and also I have anxiety and also I just had my face micro needled so I look crazy and um the mom walks outside as I'm scrolling my phone and she was like you don't have to you don't have to sit out here come on in and I was like, oh, but I, I really don't want to do this right now. <laughs> so I get and out of the car. Say, I, I, you couldn't say I don't want to do this. I you know. You say no thank you because then you're the crazy person who just had her daughter and now. <laughs> right, right. I need you to know that like I'm normal and I'm looking out for them. And I'm also the parent who when these girls wanted to get together and spend the night recently, Quinn wasn't allowed because I didn't know the families like that. And so I'm sure that I sound like the, you know, crazy overprotective mom, you know, whatever. So of as course you I, should. Right. But Judge you know, but me you, then. you get in your head about that too. Like, oh shit. Same, you know. same, same. I'd be talking a lot of shit. Same, same. Okay. <laughs> So I get out of the car and, you know, I, I liked my outfit. So I felt fine about that. But I knew my face looked crazy. And I was like, sorry about my face. I just had it dry needled earlier today. It's very red. But so then I'm like in my head the whole time about that because then the husband walks into the doorway where I'm standing and he joins the conversation. And it's a lot of this like, so when did you move to the district? Oh, where do you live? And schools are great and you know we came here so our son could you know she's telling me about why they decided to move over here and uh, it was just like they seemed very nice and um it was fine but it was just like so uh, I'm not great at making conversation like that with people that I don't know well I just lack that skill like Chris doesn't know a stranger and I wish that I could do that but I like if you just want to let me sit in the corner and be quiet and just like watch, I'm totally fine. Like, don't feel like you have to engage me. I don't I don't need to be talked to. I'm really OK over here. <laughs> oh, so Chris is the type like he'll be like, oh, yeah, the schools are so great. You know, over there on Wappingers Avenue, they have this, this, that. And he'll just go. Yes. Oh, he'll. Yes. He'll know like where you grew up and, you know, what high school you went to and, you know, where you work and what you like to do on the weekends. Yes. He's really good at that. That's why we work really well as a couple because we can go into those social situations and he can be like the normal parent and I can just like hang back and just nod smile. and smile. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Jinx. Well, well, lucky for you because uh, me and Justin Beck <laughs> both have this thing called social anxiety and on top of the social anxiety, Justin's face looks mean. <laughs> so <laughs> um, the other day uh, – you know, Shalom has started to go co-ed with her lifestyle. I don't know who and what approved that, but <laughs> suddenly it's boys in my backyard. Um, so this little boy, lovely boy, uh, walked her home. And then uh, he had his homeboy who's fully remote, who doesn't get to walk. Because the walking home is the activity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because they got to walk past a Carvel. They got to walk past a Dunkin' Donuts. They got to walk past a little supermarket. And so, it's you know, it's them like in their own little element feeling themselves like they got a little, you know, responsibility going on. And it's me watching them on the Live 360 being like, why'd you stop at um, 12 Lincoln <laughs> for so long? What was in 12 Lincoln? Um, <laughs> um, so... Not on the morning of, but on the afternoon of. So the school bell has rung and Shalom is now walking home with, I assume, with with uh, her little friend Riley, who I've known since Riley's two years old. Mm-hmm. So she's like, oh, can can Jake and um, Ellis come over? Mm-hmm. And I was like, who is that? She's like, oh, um, well, we're just going to walk and then... The other guy, his 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 mom's gonna drop him off because he's fully remote. His mom don't let him go nowhere, do nothing, because his grandparents <laughs> live in their house. Oh, so okay. like you know, he's a safe little boy that's gonna come, and he rolls deep, and he's only allowed to roll deep with this other kid. Mm-hmm. So, and also everybody knows Shalom's mom ain't letting her do nothing. So he, <laughs> y'all can come to my backyard. Um, Riley ain't allowed to go nowhere, so she can come to the backyard. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, you know, on my 90s sitcom mom thing, I had the snacks set up. I had the juice boxes set up. I had napkins, paper cups, waters. Um, 
trash popcorn, you know, a little trash out there, like, so they, they can have their own little thing. And then I purposefully, um, you know, left them alone for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then Justin was here and he pulled up as, um, he pulled up as the mother was coming to pick them up. So I'm trying to have a conversation with this mom. And I happen to actually know the mom because we were in the same preschool together. But I haven't seen her eight, nine years. So she looked great. Looked exactly like she looked. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, my God, it's been such a year. And she's been strict, too. You know, her husband Mm -hmm. hasn't gone back to the office till like last week. And, you know, she's like, I'm strict. It is what it is. So this is so nice for the children. And if if you want, your daughter can come to my house. And I was like, let's not get crazy. Um... (laughs) So Justin pulls up and we're now all three trying to have a conversation. And I'm always like, it's one thing if I'm perceived crazy, you know, because uh, for some reason I have the, the te- both the terror and the um, assumption that you could just Google me and it just is what it is. I can't control it. <laughs> 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 you know, however I came off to you at, at this particular event. It don't matter no way because you're going to go home and be like, that's what it is. <laughs> so it doesn't, <laughs> you know, like I, I have just accepted that if I'm weird, I'm weird. But with Justin, you know, he, de- he never has to talk to parents yeah. ever. So he pulls up and, and Justin don't wear a mask. If he's on his own property, mm-hmm. he don't give a shit what your comfort level is. He, he's like, no, I don't do that at my own house. Not doing that. And he'll pull yeah. up at someone else's house and be like, no, nah, I'm outside. Fuck you. I'm not, I'm not wearing that. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so he's small talking to shit. And, you know, Justin uses fucking a lot. Like, um, <sighs> so he, we're all talking. Yeah, it's been great. Oh my God. What a, what a pandemic. Mm, what a year. Oh yeah. I'm so tired. They started talking about keto and putting on weight and, you know, trying to take it off before outside really opens and, He's like, oh, man, what the fuck? It's been so crazy. And I'm like, eh. and I don't have the mask on to hide my face. So I'm like, eh. and she's looking at me. Finally, she's like, so when he walks away or whatever, she's like, oh, my God, stop. So she read my body language. Yeah. And automatically was like, I know you were tripping about however your husband just said, you know, whatever he just said, but it's not like that. So now I have me a new cool little mom friend. Nice. Who gets it. And her son, thankfully, has wonderful manners. Wow, you really like lucked a grown out. ass little man. I know. Well, the odds were in my favor. If you're strict and weird about COVID, you probably have a little sense about you. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. And also, you're exhausted too. So, what's a fucking f bomb? Yeah, yeah, it's been a fucking year. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah girl, you, <clears throat> we're going to have to start hanging out with other moms again. It's so weird. I I ran into Kroger a couple weeks ago with Lennox um, on my way to go pick the kids up from school. And as we were walking in, he sees a little friend from school. And, you know, in kindergarten, <sighs> I feel like both of, you know, the other two had a lot of playdates in kindergarten because it's a three-quarter day. There's, you know, more time for them to go home on the bus and play. But poor Lennox, I mean, he really has not socialized with any of his friends outside of school. And so he sees a little friend um, that we have to walk by in Kroger, and he's like, hey, I forget the kid's name. And the mom is standing there talking to another mom, and it was one of those moments where it was just like, ha, 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 hi, how are you? And, like, I'm talking to the child because I don't want to interrupt the conversation between this mom, but, like, of course our children do that weird, like – standing there staring at each other like so surprised that they've seen the other person like out in the real world and not at school <laughs> yeah like, and, oh my god you go to the supermarket too Weird. right <laughs> right <laughs> so I'm doing and you know because you're you're masked I'm like doing the like can you see that my eyes are smiling ha ha this is yeah I'm, I'm trying not to make this awkward but hi I'm acknowledging that you're the parent and she didn't say anything to me and then I was like oh my god am I weird for not introducing myself like should I then I was just like, okay, well, we've got to go, Lennox. Let's go get what we came for and walked on out. And I was just like, oh, my God. And so I wonder, like, how do you – can you – like, how do you stop being so in your head in social situations? Or does it matter? 
Bitch, I'm going to have to start smoking first thing in the morning. Got to be real with you. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And I know the trick that you did. I know the exact, the exact trick you did because I do that same motherfucking <laughs> one all the goddamn time. Well, hey there, Lexi. How are you? I see your hair's gotten so long. Are you and Shalom in the same Spanish class? Wow, cool. And just hoping that the conversation with the child goes well enough. The mom don't notice and I could just walk away. I could just walk away. The child was acknowledged. The mom definitely heard me talk to the child. But then I don't have to get into the group and right. talk to the women. <laughs> And I'm not weird. Now I'm not weird because I talk to the kid. Right. Because I do think it's weird when parents don't talk to my, like, acknowledge my child. Don't do that. Yeah. I don't like it when people don't say hi to my baby. Right. So, um, but I know that exact scenario that you're in and then you get in the parking lot and then you hope that no one judges your baby based on how awkward and dumb you are. <laughs> <laughs> And nobody will ever judge thing. Lennox. I mean, Lennox, Lennox will have all of the friends. He knows everybody, you know, in his class. Like, he never knows a stranger. So he will be my kid that is probably the hardest to go out with because he wants to socialize all the time. Mm-mm. Maj and Shira will stay tucked up under my skirt. They are not trying to, because they haven't been outside. They are not trying to kick it. But but Shira, once she gets going, because uh, Jen took her to playground time mm-hmm. yesterday, and Jen was like, wow, I um, Shira is very chatty. <laughs> I was like, I- oh. <laughs> Shira told all our business. Shira told this woman that she gets to eat McDonald's. I was like, why the hell you told her that? <laughs> Shira was bragging. She was like, have you ever been to the restaurant where you roll your window down and tell them you want chicken nuggets? <laughs> oh, that's another thing. So so the judgment from that, we left the mall. The mall now closes at 8 o'clock, which I didn't realize. So we're leaving the mall. It's 8 o'clock. I bought them a boba at one point, but nobody has like said we're hungry. And also Quinn knew not to ask the like, we're not eating in the food court. So as we're leaving, I was like, listen, I'll run you guys through Wendy's and then I'll, you know, make start making the drive to take this one home. Well, Wendy's is closed. And so one of them says, oh, let's go to McDonald's. And I was like, are your parents going to be okay if I feed you McDonald's? And so then I felt like I had to apologize to the mom. I was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, they wanted McDonald's. So I ran them through and they all got Happy Meals. And she's like, oh, it's fine. She's like, they eat McDonald's like once a week. But I was like worried about that too because I didn't want the parents to be upset that I oh, fed bro. their kids McDonald's. I'm worried about that all the time because, you know, listen, I'm from fucking Valrico, you motherfuckers. We eat fast food, okay? Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, it's like a weird shame that you have as a mother if you feed your kids fast food. And listen, in the pandemic, my kids have had so little, so few joys, you know? So mm-hmm. if we're going into Five Below to get a bunch of candy and, you know, glitter pens, that's exciting. And of yeah. course, you can't go in the Five Below without stopping by the Chick fil A. Right. <laughs> so, you know. We fucks with some chicken and fries. Um, (laughs) But other people's kids maybe don't, which I'm also like, what y'all sitting there eating sliced kiwi every day? Like, for real, what y'all doing? (laughs) Come on. But I guess, you know, that is. And when when Shira told Aiden this, Aiden is, is our friend. Like, Jen is super health conscious and her kids, dude. The other day, uh, Jen asked me, she said, oh, Aiden was very interested in knowing what a 7-Eleven was because Aiden <gasps> never been in a 7-Eleven. What? So I was like, you know what? I will be your cultural ambassador and I will take Aiden to 7-Eleven <laughs> to experience his first icy. Oh. <laughs> she, she was like, that'll be awesome. And so I was telling Justin about it and he's like, great. It's going to be our family that introduces the children <laughs> to trash food. And I'm <laughs> I was like, Aiden's going to think I'm the coolest lady in the world. First of all, he ain't never been in the 7-Eleven. Seven Eleven, he's never seen the the 7-Eleven machine. Oh, and I was absolutely. Like, and, they should, and they should know about that's who we are anyway, because when Shorty came to visit and um, Matt at the time had a Tesla, it just blew Shorty's whole brain <laughs> cells apart. He was like, yo, so he, Matt was kind enough to give my parents a whole, you know, ride around the town in yeah. the thing. And then... Because shorty, shorty, and, you know, we are unapologetically who we are. You know, Valrico came out short. He's like, yo, Matt, run me by a 7-Lem. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the Tesla. 
<laughs> so Matt was like, um, sh- sure, of-, of course. I'm thinking to myself, I bet Matt never even been in this 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, my kids, so- they like fast food. McD- I don't do McDonald's, but my mother-in-law, that's like the treat. Um, because they had, like, when she would pick Lennox up from preschool, they have to pass the McDonald's on the way home. So he always convinced her to stop and get him something. She picked him up yesterday and they stopped at McDonald's on the way home. So for my kids, that's like a very rare, like, that's a special, special treat. But you pass a White Castle, he's like, Are, can we go get a White Burger today? Because apparently when Chris takes him to run errands on Saturdays, their little, like, tradition is to stop at White Castle and get tiny sliders. So you can pass East Coast subs. Yeah. He wants to go to Penn Station. He wants to eat a white burger. Loves it all. Girl, Shira's favorite restaurant is Subway, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when you it's- let the kids choose, like, where do you guys want to go eat? And they're like, Panera. And I was like, dream big, guys. Come on. <laughs> Dude, um, Shira has a whole relationship with Lisa over some damn Subway. And she's like, it is my favorite thing. Um, like she knows her sandwich, she knows how to order her sandwich, like, and we'll eat a big ass sandwich. So listen, I, I feel like we have to undo this, this, this fast food shame because the other thing is that it is convenient. I'm not killing my child. Come on. Right. It's not like I'm in a fucking, um, you know, place where we can't get fresh produce easily. There are apples and bananas and nectarines and, and, and. You know, what granola and yogurt and all kind of other healthy options that are right here on the counter that you can have every single day. If one day I don't fucking feel like it and I'm going to drive you through this Chick-fil-A right quick, I feel like I don't have to feel bad about that. No, I don't think you have to feel bad about it. And I think that for me personally, I really like tried to make sure that my kids have like a balanced view of food and nutrition and really have tried to drive home, especially with Quinn, because I feel like girls are, you know, they get this message so much harder than boys do. But I was like, guys, there's room for everything. And so I think that, you know, villainizing fast food or certain things, it it almost makes them more appealing. And so I think that, you, you know, if you don't let your kids have certain things for whatever reason, it almost creates this, like, it puts it on a pedestal. And so my fear is, is that if I if I'm so strict and I am so severely limited on what they can and cannot have that they don't understand how to eat it and like feel okay about it. And I don't want them to ever have guilt or like shame around what they choose to put in their bodies and understand that like food is pleasurable and it's good. And you want to know what? Chick-fil-A waffle fries with honey mustard is a delight. Salty as fuck. That's, that's, that's the way to go. Um, but yeah, I do, I, I think a lot of it too, like is, um, for me anyway, is a weird, like, like the secrecy that I have about it, that Shalom has it, you know, and that I've taken her friends before. I do also ask, you know what I mean? Like I'll text the mom and be like, the girls wanted to know if they could have McDonald's. And like one time the mom wrote back, oh, that'll be a nice treat. And I was like, a treat? It's like lunch. It's lunch. But okay, um, <laughs> you called it a treat too. You called it a treat too. So I think that's where like the way we even talk about it is yeah. where that shame comes from. Yeah. Um, and I, after a while, you know, because, you know, you, you, you accumulate a Happy Meal toy. I just stopped asking for the toy. Just, I don't want to have to deal with the toy, throwing away the toy, the waste Ugh. of the toy, yeah. people knowing I got the toy, unless it's Hello Kitty. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's a weird um, residue of 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 a class issue when in yeah. reality you can you can pull up any report on google they say that people with money is the ones that's really eating mcdonald's i've read that a thousand times really yes it's really not a class thing although it's available you know everywhere like some neighborhoods here remember i told you about seacliff last week uh-huh seacliff don't got no mcdonald's wow. there's places where that shit is not allowed in their town. Well, I think after Super Size Me, I think that, I mean, it really tainted McDonald's. I mean, I know that they talked about fast food in general, but I feel like just for me personally, like that really tainted McDonald's for me. And I know that that, you know, that documentary wasn't, uh, what do I want to say, subjective in its presentation. But um, I wonder if some of that has something to do because when it came out, we were all like, 
you know, in our 20s, in those formative years, like before we started having kids. So I wonder if some of that is, you know, continued to shape it as we've, you know, gotten older and had families. See, I'm terrible with those things. All those documentaries where they're like, don't eat meat. It does this bad thing to you. Yeah. Don't have sugar. It does this bad thing to you. Don't eat McDonald's. It does this bad thing to you. Bitch, I start watching those and be hungry than a motherfucker for the daily <laughs> thing they're telling me I shouldn't eat. <laughs> it's, I just have this defiant nature where I'm like, you can't tell me that's bad. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably so embarrassing. But I also feel like, you know, it's also been a pandemic. Um, I have cooked so many more meals per day mm-hmm. uh, because I can't get to the restaurant and pick it up to go this, that. Unless Justin's going to do it, I'm just going to be here and cook. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm not going to have fast food shame. I'm not going to have it. Listen, I should not be eating it. Like, you know, uh, scrap life. I should not be eating whatever my kids don't finish. I definitely <laughs> should not be doing that, especially as old as I am and as hard as it's going to be for me to, um, you know, shed this uh pandemic hibernation suit uh, <laughs> i just feel like i i why should i feel bad about it and the other thing is if i have this shame about it the least likely person that i think would eat it or give it to their children i bet she has that shame and hides it better probably yeah you know yeah i don't know anybody i'm trying to think of like in our immediate lives like friends or family everybody engages in fast food at least once a month I mean there was a a month I'm just saying like at minimum there I mean there was a time in my life where Chris was traveling five days a week and there was a Chick-fil-a on the way home from the gym and I would regularly stop there at lunchtime and feed the kids because I was just like I I was pregnant with Lennox I was like I just don't have you know, I don't want to get things dirty. I don't want to make more dishes. They'll be really happy if they eat this Chick-fil-A. <laughs> so bad. Right. And look at them now. They're happy and they're regular <laughs> and they're fine. Nobody, nobody, you know, nobody's sitting there dying. It's fine. Right. <laughs> it's fine. Nobody, you know, no, it's it's fine. Yeah. Look, we're, the way we're talking about it, like clearly I, I still have shame. Oh, yeah. Going, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Literally had shame not 72 hours ago. <laughs> You know what else, too? It's because Justin Beck shames me about it. And that's why I get, I feel weird about it, too. Oh. Because he's it, constantly like, oh, the kids can't have chicken nuggets again. I'm talking chicken. about, like, the ones you order and put in the freezer. And... Oh. Who who doesn't have the costco size bag of chicken nuggets in their freezer? Dude, there are people that exist in this world that don't give their kids chicken nuggets. That blows my mind. My kids eat chicken nuggets once a week at least that is the easy like everybody's busy that's always like the Thursday night meal when Quinn has gymnastics and Chris is gone and it's just me and the you know Bennett has karate and that it's so easy heat that oven up to 400 throw those nugs in everybody's happy right and and my kids aren't going to eat you know uh simulate or whatever the fuck those weird fake chicken nuggets are just like you should try to introduce them I'm like have you met your children Right. <laughs> He's sitting here telling me trying to try, introduce them to Beyond Meat. They're not going to eat that, Justin. Oh, they're uh, you, listen, 4 weeks ago I tried. I told Chris I was like buy tilapia. I'm going to bread it. I'm going to bake it and I'm going to tell the kids that it's chicken strips. They smelled my shit from a mile away. They ate it and they were like, this doesn't taste like chicken and I was like, it's they're homemade. They're not going to taste like the ones from Costco cuz they're homemade. And I think they each ate like a couple of them, and they were like, yeah, we're good. So they they knew something was up. Oh, th- listen, my kids will only eat um, uh, grilled chicken. So, mm-hmm. you know, chicken breast, thinly sliced. Got to be thinly sliced or else they're not. They're like, what's this thickness? They're not. They're very. It's got to be thinly sliced so that it can be literally uh, grilled to all hell. It's got to be almost black. <laughs> 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 they'll eat salmon <laughs> they'll eat salmon that also has to be very well done yeah uh they'll eat um roasted potatoes they'll eat corn on the cob they'll eat um broccoli maybe 
Mm-hmm. Maybe it depends. Is the broccoli oh, extremely my kids buttery love... and all of the nutrients cooked out of it? Then yes. My kids love broccoli. Now, do your kids eat like raw ass vegetables? Like, yeah, they'll just sit there and snack on fucking peppers and every, shit every day. Yeah, their lunches every day have either peppers or cucumbers. Sometimes they like carrots. Bennett loves a salad. But um, broccoli, like I can never make enough broccoli. They love it sautéed in olive oil with a squirt of lemon. They're obsessed. Oh, see, I have to make it. I have to steam it and literally use a stick of butter or else they're like, nah, baby, I can't. <laughs> Do they like, have you ever given it to them with like cheese melted on it? Oh, no, because my kids also have a visual thing. So if it doesn't look like the way that it was presented the last time that they found it to be acceptable... <laughs> They're like, nah, homie, what's this? What's that? And I'm like, it's cheese that you would like and that you eat. Mm, that looks weird. You know what? They're very picky. I hate it when, so like, we'll we'll make something. I forget what, oh, Chris made this like macaroni recently. And it was like shredded rotisserie chicken, um, noodles, cheese, and bacon. It was amazing. And the children looked at it at first and they were like, ew, this is disgusting. And I was like, it's literally everything that you guys like. It's just together in a bowl as a different thing. Do your kids ever, like, they love pizza, but then they won't eat, you know, mozzarella cheese or, you know, the other pieces individually? Oh, correct. They love pizza, but put that shit on a bagel and like, what the hell happened here? (laughs) 100 percent oh maja's not playing none of that shit she's Ugh. not playing you can't get nothing past maja no ma'am uh-uh. and the thing is she only recently started eating salmon in the pandemic uh-huh because shalom been on salmon shira been on salmon shira eats sushi like shira's not afraid of nothing shira uh-huh. eats i'm not i don't worry about shira but it's maja who's really really picky so somehow some way it was a pandemic and i forget what i said i think i said um we're extremely poor there is a food uh, shortage in the world because of the pandemic. This is the only food we'll have. So you can either eat this and get okay with it or, you know, you'll go hungry. I don't I don't know what to tell you. And also, if you get too skinny, the next time I take you to your doctor's checkup, they're going to take you away. <gasps> That's the reality. <laughs> Shira's like, let me get her. <laughs> Maj is like, let me get the salmon. <laughs> Oh, bitch, Shira was, like, grinding on her food. She's like, is, 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 is the doctor said I'm going to get taken away? I'm like, nah, I think you're good. Let me see. Let me feel your arm. Let me feel your ribs. Yeah, you look good. And Maja's like, really? I was like, yes, really. She's like, well, where do we go then? And I was like, not a place you like. I'll tell you that right now. They don't got no toys. They don't got no kind of Wi-Fi. They don't have nothing you like. So if you think you don't like this food here, honey, Girl, wait till you see what they serve you at the place. She's like, well, what's the place? I was like, it's a fucking place for the children (laughs) that are too skinny. Well, what's it like? It's like jail. Oh, no. That shit worked. She was like, man, I like salmon. I like salmon. It tastes good. I was like, that's what I thought. (laughs) And so now once a week, she would like salmon. That's so funny. Listen, I don't feel bad for the things, the lies I tell. (laughs) I don't. I don't. Lennox is my pickiest eater. He's always the one that has problems at dinner time. The other two are good. And the weird thing is, is as babies, we fed them everything. They ate, you know, adult food from the table. I did baby lead weaning with Lennox. Um, There was nothing that I didn't give those kids. And then it's like this switch flips. And it's like, what happened to you? No, it's like they want to – all of a sudden they have – their their taste buds have, have opinions. And I'm like, Yes. Well, yeah, like Sh- Sh- Shalom used to eat everything. Everything I put in front of her, Shalom would eat. And then yeah. one day she was just like, I don't eat that. I was like, yes, you do. You always have. Yes. What are you talking about? Shalom used to eat fucking uh, – Carrots, um, any kind of soup, any kind of soup you would put in front of her, she would eat it. Um, spinach, she would eat everything. And then one day she was just like, oh, I only eat chicken nuggets. I only eat stuff that'll make my skin look bad. And um, <laughs> <laughs> also Clog my arteries. Have a weird, oh, also that'll make me have a weird relationship with a scale when I get in high school so that you will want to actually kill me. I, the only thing I eat. So like, 
And I, I, I can't, I can't deal with the pizza. I, I don't want a pizza in here because I don't want to deal with the box. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'll order a pizza, but I'm like, y'all got to eat all this pizza in this sitting or you're going to be having pizza for the next couple of days. So, like, mm-hmm. they'll eat it, but they don't love it. Shalom won't eat pasta. How? What could you know? Right. That's like a given. Won't eat pasta. Won't, don't put red sauce on it. She's not doing it. Girl, I've tried to do pasta, just like buttered pasta, garlic butter pasta, yeah. and then put the grilled chicken that they do like to eat on top of it sliced they're like mm-hmm. ew what happened what and i'm like it's fucking literally pasta and chicken don't- <laughs> help me understand yeah it's maddening and then and the other thing that's maddening too is that things that they love and they'll devour and we run out of in record time and we buy it again and then they don't want to touch it the next time it comes into the house correct and that's the problem with costco hate it so like they'll say oh yeah we'll eat these you know you can get those gigantic muffins so i'll do that for breakfast with like you know a scrambled egg and a bacon i try to give them really big breakfast because mm-hmm. i know for lunch they're gonna want some bullshit they're gonna want mm-hmm. a grilled cheese they're not gonna eat the apple they're gonna want um you know they'll eat like four chicken nuggets maybe but they're not gonna eat the cucumbers i put there shira will maja's looking at you like <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not going to the place. I know you're a liar. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what else makes me feel bad? What? Is um those Instagram accounts. Kids eating color. What my kids ate. Ugh. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Well, they'll make the, they'll make the cucumber look like a flower. Mm-hmm. And they'll make the fucking... They'll make the fucking olive be, be, be the center of the sunflower. And then they'll be really sit there and pass it off like their kids ate that shit. And I'm like, but lady, I'm telling you they did today, but they not going to eat that shit when they turn seven. Right. I know. And it's so, it's so stressful. I used to, every morning I used to, the kids love a frozen waffle. So I would take the waffle and it would change every day, but I would like, I'd put peanut butter on it and then I'd make a face out of fruit on top of it. Sometimes I would like cut the strawberries in little arches and make them into bear ears. Like I put so much time and effort into it and my kids, you know, after a while they're like, we don't want these waffles anymore. The other day I, Quinn loves avocado toast. And so she had requested it a couple days for breakfast. So that's what she got. And then she had something else the other couple days. And then um, like on that Friday, I was like, I'm going to make her so happy. I'm going to make her avocado toast this morning. And she didn't even ask for it. So I made it, put it on the table, and I was waiting for her to come out and be like, oh, my God, you're the best mom ever. And she was like, (sighs) again, (gasps) I was like, excuse me? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk problem. away. Get yourself a bowl of cereal, uh, ungrateful child. That's the problem. Like, I, I got Maja on scrambled eggs and turkey bacon, but then, I don't know what happened. Four, you know, four or five times of that, and then she's like, I don't eat eggs anymore. What? Right. What do you mean you don't yes. eat eggs anymore? And like, I'm not trying to be a sous chef out this bitch, or what do you call that? A, a yeah. diner. Yeah. This is not that, but she won't. So she'll, oh, she also doesn't eat turkey bacon anymore. So when the other ones are eating, you know, half of a corn muffin and scrambled eggs and turkey bacon, Maja's like, I'll just have cereal then. Yes. But I need them all to eat the same big breakfast because when comes lunchtime, I I can't be satisfying all your weird tastes. Right. Oh, no, I've, I've totally gone off the rails. They, they all get a different breakfast now because I can't listen to the bitching. I made Bennett the most beautiful yogurt parfait the other morning. And he came out and he looked at me and he was like, I don't want this. And this was after like five days of me like consistently trying to find him. And he's the child that will eat anything. And I was like, well, I, what do you want me to do for you? I was like, you are now making your own breakfast. He was complaining about his lunches. He didn't like that I put arugula in his salad because it's too spicy. He prefers the hamburger lettuce. I was just like, oh my God, it's it's impossible. And I already hate to cook. So it's like, you guys are just really making this 10 times harder. <laughs> I was going to say, you're really keeping it together though. If you hate to cook, like my kids ain't eating a salad. 
Shira will eat a salad. Shalom's looking at you like, um, I'm sorry, that doesn't clog pores. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Bennett is the Bennett is the only one but like today for lunch like yesterday I made lunch they all got the same thing because I wasn't in a mood Bennett complained so then today it was like Lennox got a turkey roll up and then they all get like the same sides Bennett got two hard boiled eggs because he didn't want deli meat and I hate sending peanut butter and jelly every single day there needs to be like an actual protein in their lunch And then Quinn was like, may I please have avocado toast? And can you make sure that there's lime in the avocado and salt? I was like, oh, my God. So I've. Wait, she has avocado toast in her lunch. How does that keep? Um, It does really well. So I put like um, I mash up the avocado and I put it in a little tin and then I toast the bread and I let it cool fully before I put it into the lunchbox so it doesn't get soggy and I cut it in halves. And so then she just uh, opens up her little tin and spreads the avocado on it. She said it was good. See, Shalom's not doing that. I, Shalom wants very well done chicken nuggets, so I got to get up at 6 in the morning. Oh, my God. Fire up the oven. I do the chicken nuggets. She wants sliced apples, thinly sliced. Don't play her. Um, <laughs> a cheese stick that she'll maybe eat. Yeah. I throw in some carrots, and, like, she'll get a little mini chocolate chip muffin or a Rice Krispie Treat or chocolate pretzels, some kind of dessert. Yeah. Um, and uh, if the chicken, nu- chicken nuggets are not well done enough, she she's, you know, she's got problems. She's like, you know, they don't really taste good if they're, like, soggy. So They're so critical. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, so you were just wondering, how about you just go in lo- the lunch line and get yourself a little dry-ass bagel then? Don't, don't, <laughs> don't do that. I'm up here at 6 in the morning making a hot breakfast and a hot lunch packed. Right. You got questions? Okay. <laughs> My kids, um, they Quinn and Bennett both have thermoses, and so sometimes they'll take leftovers from the night before uh, or soup. They like to take soups for lunch, but I try not to do that too much because I'm worried about all that salt. Oh, my kids love us. They, they love the sh- Shalom and Ma- uh, or Shira and Maja mm-hmm. will eat a soup, baby girl. They love a soup. Yeah. Mine Any too. soup, they love a soup. And I love that they love it because it's easy. Right. I, oh, I'll call down to the chicken kebab place and get the lemon the lemon chicken soup. I'll call down <gasps> to the Italian place and get the pasta fajol, the, you know, the giant court. Split mm-hmm. that bitch in half and be like, here's lunch. But the problem with soup is they're going to be like, I'm hungry. Uh-huh. Yep. I'm hungry. Do your kids eat what constantly? You yes, but don't gain weight. So, like, I look like a terrible parent. I do. I feel like I look like a terrible... My kids are bony. Yeah. They- my kids are frail, bitch. Pa- frail <laughs> and pale. Frail, pale, ashy, uh, bags under their eyes. They must be like, what is Miss Beck doing over there? I'm very concerned. So, summertime, I'm going to have them baking in the sun, and I'm going to fucking fatten them up because they can't go to school in the fall looking the way they look right now. They look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Only Shalom looks like a regular, normal, healthy child. <laughs> the two that have been home with me this whole time, uh-uh, they ain't gonna make it. <laughs> and I feel really bad because I am trying. I'm, I'll, I'm all day in the kitchen making them snacks, cutting this yeah. up, doing this, doing that, but they don't eat, or they eat a little bit. Yeah. And then it's also, you know, a lot of junk, to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's only so much carrots and cucumbers they're gonna they're gonna be willing to eat. Yeah, Maja will eat like seaweed, but what caloric intake is that? Right, that's not filling either. Yeah, so I'm just having a very hard time, and I'm like, do other moms ha- please just? I need other moms to be honest about this shit because, like, the other kids don't be looking skinny and like they live under the stairs like mine. <laughs> <laughs> were you a skinny kid i mean some of it's very. just probably genetics very bony as hell okay. and, and um my nephew uh justin's nephew lanky tall skinny bony yeah so it's a thing it happens you know but maja is just outrageously thin well, but I'm sure as she eats. gets older and, you know, because their bodies change. And once those hormones kick in, everything changes. I mean, Shalom used to be dainty. She's not now. Shalom's, like, taller than me. Yeah. And can fit all my clothes. 
Oh, I'm the other day Quinn was like, I don't have any leggings that I want to wear. And so randomly I was like, here, I have a pair of cropped ones. Try them and see. Now this child is tall and thin. And I thought there's no way these are going to fit her, but God bless these Lululemon pants because they fit her tiny ass. And today again, she was like, can I wear those pants again today? I was like, you know what? Just keep them. They're yours. Congratulations. Oh, I've had to, you know what I did? I took a marker. I took a Sharpie marker and put S on all the tags of the, the, the leggings no longer belong to me because I know she's just going to take them. And there yeah. are a few that I really, really like that I don't want her to touch. But like almost all my leggings and like joggers and shit like that, that's mm-hmm. just Shalom's clothes now. Yeah. Because where am I going? Oh, she can wear my shoes. I can wear her shoes. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. We share shoes. We share shoes. But Shalom is fucking up my... my, I have a really cute pair of Nikes that look mad vintage, and she's fucking them up. I'm like, (laughs) when when I had these, they didn't have that yellow... You know, when the sole starts to look... What happened there? (laughs) Don't be fucking up my shoes. That's where I feel like... That's where I feel like she didn't get, you know very much blackness because she just don't be caring how the shoes look i'm like um. <laughs> <laughs> i'm serious you know those shoes the the big white air force ones that all the girls wear oh yeah. quinn has a pair yeah shalom wears them like but for real like ties them all tight and gross the shoelaces are dirty <gasps> they're they're shalom. not clean oh shalom wears her shoes like just dead ass for real Oh, Quinn, my kids are like, see, I have to tell my kids, I'm like, guys, their shoes, they're allowed to get a little bit dirty. Like, it's OK. But my kids are they, they do not love a dirty shoe. They're so dainty with them. Good for them, because Shalom is out here living like just a real white. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but here you here go your children. <laughs> I know. Quinn's Air Forces are pristine. She gets upset. She was upset when they started to get creases across the toe box. And I was like, it's going to happen. It's OK. Oh, Shalom's look like. Shalom's look like kitchen shoes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they are beat up and wrong and she doesn't care. Oh, no. And I bought her new black ones, but the black ones actually do look like kitchen shoes. So she won't wear them. <laughs> And she's like, Mom, what shoes did you say that I should wear? And so, like, she's now looking in my stuff. And I have yeah. I have cute sneakers. She's yeah. going to start fucking up my sneakers. So I know I'm going to have to start buying two of each. Right. Oh, yeah. This weekend, Quinn wanted to get white Crocs. And I was like, they're going to look like trash. I was like, they're going to look so bad. And her little girlfriend was like, I told you so. And Quinn was like, my Air Forces are still so white. And I was like... Yeah, and I said, but I think you probably keep them nice because you know they were expensive and you probably won't, you know, have the same level of care for a pair of, you know, $20 Crocs. Girl, Crocs ain't no damn $20 because I looked at them just this past weekend for uh, Shalom and Shira and Maj. All of them, actually. Shalom wanted a pair, too. No, baby girl. $34.99 to $44.99. <gasps> You're kidding me. I, I don't know who the fuck Crocs think they is, but that, <laughs> that's insane. they're not cheap anymore. Yep. And 40, all three of my girls want them. $44? If you yes. could and I'm talking you could about buy the like, ugly croc. You could buy a nice pair of shoes. They like they, they could have a nice pair of like sneakers or sandals for summer. Uh-uh. They <gasps> they Shira and Maja love the crocs and they want the tie-dye and they want all the fucking fixins. Uh, and that's without the little fixins. The fixins are, are called. fucking expensive. My dad, so Quinn wanted a pair for Christmas. My dad bought her a pair for Christmas. She got pink ones. And then I looked to get her like the little jewels, I think at Valentine's Day. It, it cost, it, it was like $30 for just like a couple little like, I don't, what are they called? But gems, buttons? I think they buttons? might be called j- gibbets. J- gibbets. Something, something <laughs> right. I don't know what the fuck they're called. You know what I do though? You can go online on um, Amazon and just get a whole like a hundred of them for ten bucks. Oh really? They're fake. They're fake. They don't know. They look fake, but so what you looking at my feet for? <laughs> yeah, Crocs are not are not cheap, and I don't know. Like maybe it's like a Post Malone thing. I don't know. Like how? Because Shalom never wanted them either, and then yeah. it was like, I could, okay, cool, I guess, but they'll wear them. I got yeah, a little pair of Vans. It's it's odd. Quinn bought a pair. Oh, we walked through anthropology a couple weeks ago because she wanted 
to go to the mall. And so I was like, okay, we'll just go in here real quick. And she bought a pair of socks from the sales section at Anthropology. They were tie dye. And so she wears those like fully pulled up with a short and then the croc with the tall sock. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Quinn's on it. That's the look. I keep telling Shalom. I bought a Shalom a bunch of pairs of tall socks and she doesn't wear them. I'm like, okay. She's like, I'm not going to wear those with my leggings. I'm like, but they're with bike shorts. Then I realized she won't wear the bike shorts that I bought her. Oh, she no. She only wears them on the weekends. She only wears them on the weekends because she wants to shave her legs. Oh. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm a letter. Yeah, letter. I let Quinn shave hers. Well, she's not going to shave them. I'm taking her to place, and I'm just going to add that to her monthly standing appointment. So now she'll yeah. get an eyebrow lip and a leg wax. Yeah. Shalom's becoming very expensive. <laughs> She's getting her first facial uh, at the end of the month. Oh, wow. Because she won't let me. You know, I bought that thing that you put in the newsletter. Yeah. The, um, spatula thing. Yeah. And I don't know if maybe I'm using it wrong or whatever. She's like, it hurts. Oh, my God. I'm like, how does it hurt? It doesn't hurt. I'm, I called over there and was like, y'all got a thing for like teenagers? And she said, yeah, bring her in. Yeah. And I said, can I watch? She said, uh, of course. <laughs> so... um. I'm going to have me a delicious little day of getting my, see my daughter get fucked up on the facial table. Um, <laughs> I cannot wait. Maja can't, Maja's like, can I come? Cause Maja's like that shit now. Maja be watching earwax removal and um, blackheads and stuff on my Instagram. Every time I come to my Instagram, my explore page is all that. And Maja's like, oh, sorry, I was watching. It relaxes her. So I let her do it. <laughs> She got her iPad taken away, so every chance she gets, she grabs my phone and is like, can I watch your wax? I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff, too, though. It's so satisfying. Oh, my God. I love it. I, I watched somebody it. digging out an ingrown toenail the other day. What are you talking about? Ingrown toenail is actually the best category. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me. You know what I'll do in the newsletter? I'll tell you exactly, because I know there's got to be people that are into that. There are certain accounts on YouTube non-american that handle that shit no blood really handle that shit no blood and get all that dead skin out of there all that dig them corners out bitch yeah. american podiatry is wrong and off i'm telling you it <laughs> what they're doing in brazil what they're doing in argentina bitch oh don't even get me started on what they're doing in thailand Whew, thailand is bloody oh no and the way they're cutting it makes the shape make it creates a trumpet nail but the motherfuckers do got to come back. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is Maja weird? Oh, no. <laughs> no. She's totally normal. That stuff is so good. She's advanced. She's advanced. Definitely. Because she also will be watching it and I'll be like, she'll be like, I'm not like, you know, scared like Shalom. <laughs> I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh girl let me go i'm wearing this dumbass earpiece and it's making me feel like i'm collecting wax as we speak yeah. <laughs> all I'm right i'm serious all right. you know when you have shit in your ear and it feels like now your ears building up stuff oh i don't have bad wax but benna does and so i can i can say that yes by uh oh wait like when you like you have to do him every other day or else it's crazy in there Oh, yeah, he like so bad that he can't hear. <gasps> yeah, now, does it's he really have bad. Liquidy, liquidy golden honey wax, or is it hard brown? It's dark brown. Hard dark brown. It's thick. I one time we were at the pediatrician, and she was like, "I can't even see his eardrum. His ears are so full of wax." And she got out that little irrigation thing where they like pour the water <gasps> into the ear and collect it in the little cup. Oh, in the in the in the cup shape like a like a kidney bean. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, queen. Okay. Yeah. It was crazy, <laughs> and so I bought oh, like an. Oh, and they shot the warm kit. water in the ear. They shot yes. the water in the ear. Yes. And then the gunk started coming out. Yes. Did I ever tell you that Sarah Silverman once irrigated my ear? No. <laughs> okay. You know what? Let me go. That's the, that, I'll tell you that another. Time. <laughs> that's another. That's a story for another time. That's so random. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, that's it for another episode of Imperfect Strangers Podcast, your favorite podcast, your go-to podcast. 
podcast you love to listen to every week. Oh my god, imagine if I was really like that all the time. Anyway, um, <laughs> thank you guys for listening so very much. Just like you heard at the beginning of this episode, there is a party coming up Saturday, May 22nd, 7 p.m. We are Zooming to celebrate Amanda's 39th birthday, Taurus season, and the fact that this podcast is one year old. We did it, Joe. We've been up in this bitch for a year. I cannot believe. Thank you so much for continuing to support us, for joining our stranger community. I love all y'all. We love all y'all. Like, for real, we have our own little friends in our head going on in the chats on the Monday Night Live, in the Discord, if you're cool enough to be up in there. Um, Thank you so much uh, for, you know, making it so that we have something to look forward to every week. Just chatting. Just chatting. Um, If you've been here for a long time, you already know this stuff, so thank you. You, you, I guess you can go. You can stay. You can go. if You you don't have to stay. Um, But if you're new here, hi, welcome. Our Instagram is really important to our podcast. Uh, It's where we do interactive stories for a visual element for each episode. Uh, You can find those in our highlights tab. Um, You can also get information on what's coming up you can read the summary of the episode etc etc um we also you know give you little previews on the episode you know little little uh audio previews there's a lot of stuff going on in the instagram and it's important if you're there if you want to you know fully enjoy this episode so it's instagram.com slash imperfect strangers underscore podcast um there we always also have our Monday Night Lives where we log on around 7-ish to recap the episode you just heard or not. I got to be honest, we don't, oftentimes we don't get to that because we just be in the chat chatting. So, um, but it is fun and it's uh, where you can meet all of your stranger friends. And then um, if you miss stuff and you want to catch Monday Night Lives later or you want bonus episodes or you want to read our newsletter every month, we have a Patreon. The link is in the bio for you to set yourself up there. Follow us on Twitter, Imperv Strangers. Me and Amanda are on Clubhouse. How? We don't know what we're doing on there, but we'd be on there. Um, Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you back here Monday at 7. Bye.